Now, inflation and unemployment are the two most talked about words in contemporary society. These two are the big problems that plague all the economies. Almost everyone knows what inflation exactly is, but it remains a source of great confusion because it's difficult to define it unambiguously. Inflation is a general increase in the prices of goods and services across the board. It drives up prices for everything you buy, from a haircut to a gallon of gas, or to put it another way, the purchasing power of every dollar in your pocket declines. But what causes inflation and what happens in times with significant inflation? How does the Federal Reserve and other central banks control it? We'll answer all these questions and many more in this episode. But before we go too far, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next videos on how to stay protected during inflation. What is inflation? Inflation is the rate at which the prices for goods and services increase. Inflation often affects the buying capacity of consumers. In other words, inflation refers to the increase in the prices of the goods and services of daily use such as food, housing, clothing, transport, recreation, consumer staples, etc. Inflation is measured by taking into consideration the average price change in a basket of commodities and services over a period of time. Now, most central banks try to limit inflation in order to keep their respective economies functioning efficiently. There are certain advantages as well as disadvantages to inflation. A simple example would be, suppose a kilo of apples cost $5 in 2019 and they cost $10 in 2022. Then there would be a 100% increase in the cost of a kilo of apples. In the same way, many commodities and services whose prices have risen over time are put in a group and the percentage is calculated by keeping a year as the base year. The percentage of increase in prices of the group of commodities is the rate of inflation. Causes of inflation Inflation is caused by multiple factors. Here are a few. Money supply Excess currency money supply in an economy is one of the primary causes of inflation. This happens when the money supply circulation in a nation grows above the economic growth, therefore reducing the value of the currency. In the modern era, countries have shifted from the traditional methods of valuing money with the amount of gold they possess. Modern methods of money valuation are determined by the amount of currency that is in circulation, which is then followed by the public's perception of the value of that currency. National Debt There are a number of factors that influence national debt, which include the nation's borrowing and spending. In a situation where a country's debt increases, the respective country is left with two options. Taxes can be raised internally, and additional money can be printed to pay off the debt. Demand Pull Effect The demand pull effect states that in a growing economy, as wages increase within an economy, people will have more money to spend on goods and services. The increase in demand for goods and services will result in companies raising prices that their consumers will bear in order to balance supply and demand. Cost Push Effect Now, this theory states that when companies face increased input costs on raw materials and wages for manufacturing consumer goods, they will preserve their profitability by passing the increased production cost to the end consumer in the form of increased prices. Exchange Rates an economy with exposure to foreign markets mostly functions on the basis of the dollar value. In a trading global economy, exchange rates play an important factor in determining the rate of inflation. Effects of inflation Inflation changes the economy in a variety of ways, including 1. Erodes purchasing power This is inflation's primary and most pervasive effect. An overall rise in prices over time reduces the purchasing power of consumers since a fixed amount of money will afford progressively less consumption. Consumers lose purchasing power whether inflation is running at 2% or at 4%, they just lose it twice as fast at the higher rate. Compounding would ensure that the overall price level would increase more than twice as much over the long run if long-run inflation were to double. 2. Hurts the poor disproportionately Lower income consumers tend to spend a higher proportion of their income overall and on necessities than those with higher incomes, and so have less of a cushion against the loss of purchasing power inherent in inflation. This is what economists mean when they note that lower incomes correlate with a higher marginal propensity to consume. Policy makers and financial markets participants often focus on core inflation, excluding the prices of food and energy, which tend to be more volatile and therefore less reflective of longer-term inflation trends. 
But lower income wage earners in developed economies and most people in developing economies spend a relatively large proportion of their weekly or monthly household budget on food and energy and commodities hard to substitute or go without when prices spike. 3. Keeps deflation at bay the Federal Reserve's aims for inflation of 2% over the long run to meet its mandates for stable prices and maximum employment. It targets modest inflation rather than aiming for steady prices because a slightly positive inflation rate greases the wheels of commerce, provides a margin of error in the event inflation is overestimated, and deters deflation, the overall decline in prices that can be much more destabilizing than comparable inflation. 4. Can cause painful recessions the trouble with a trade-off between inflation and unemployment is that prolonged acceptance of higher inflation to protect jobs may cause inflation expectations to rise to the point where they set off an inflationary spiral of price hikes and pay increases, as happened in the US during the stagflation of the 1970s. To regain lost credibility and convince everyone again it would control inflation, the Federal Reserve was subsequently forced to raise interest rates much higher and to keep them high longer. That, in turn, caused unemployment to soar and to stay high for longer than would likely have been the case had the Fed not allowed inflation to spiral so high. 5. Hurts Bonds, Growth Stocks Normally, bonds are lower-risk investments, providing regular interest income at a fixed rate. Inflation, and especially high inflation, impairs the value of bonds by lowering the present value of that income. As interest rates increase in response to rising or elevated inflation, so does the yield on newly issued bonds. The market price of bonds issued previously at a lower yield then drops proportionally since bond prices are the inverse of bond yields. Monetary Policy Tools – How the Federal Reserve and other central banks fight rising prices Inflation is generally controlled by the central bank and or the government. In theory, there are a variety of tools to control inflation including Monetary Policy High interest rates reduce demand in the economy, leading to lower economic growth and lower inflation. In other words, central banks use contractionary monetary policy to reduce inflation. They reduce the money supply by restricting the volume of money banks can lend. The banks charge a higher interest rate, making loans more expensive, and then fewer businesses and individuals borrow, which slows growth. Control of Money Supply since there is a close link between the money supply and inflation, therefore controlling money supply can control inflation. For example, central banks use open market operations and quantitative easing, which involves selling or buying up government bonds to fight rising prices. Supply Side Policies Policies to increase the competitiveness and efficiency of the economy, putting downward pressure on long-term costs. Supply-side policies include reducing marginal tax rates, lowering tax rates on interest earned from savings, and privatizing public industries. Fiscal Policy A higher rate of income tax could reduce spending, demand, and inflationary pressures. The two major examples of expansionary fiscal policy are tax cuts and increased government spending. Both of these policies are intended to increase aggregate demand while contributing to deficits or drawing down budget surpluses. Wage Price Controls Trying to control wages and prices could, in theory, help to reduce inflationary pressures. However, they are rarely used because they're not usually effective. How to Protect Yourself When it comes to protecting yourself against inflation, the most straightforward strategy is to invest in commodities that tend to hold their value, no matter what the economy is doing. Gold is the commodity most often used in this way because of the fact that it has held its value remarkably well over the past 100 years. There are other strategies though. Certain types of asset class tend to perform better and are therefore more likely to outperform the market when inflation is occurring. Because of this, investors can plan for inflation by investing in asset classes that tend to outperform the market during inflationary climates. Inflation is really not something that we can control. It's going to happen no matter how much we wish prices would stay steady. But by being mindful of your portfolio and adding to your income passively, you should be able to sell through any increase in prices without having to change your lifestyle. That's it for this episode. Please give us your feedback in the comments section below. To watch more episodes on financial topics like this, hit that like and subscribe button. If you want to support us even more, buy us a coffee from the link in the description. Good luck and see you in the next episode.